with something like software, you don't actually know everything you have to do up front. And in order to know everything you need to do, you have to just go build it <laughs> the first time. And it's only by actually going through it that you're able to properly flush, flush out what you need. Yeah, yes, I, I think there, that, that there is that. I mean, the other thing that we've seen uh, previously in trying to engage with assets inside organizations is that, you know, having a very large do dollar on number on the end of it, you know, certainly didn't, often didn't make any difference to anybody and didn't make people do it. I mean, certainly my experience was, you know, you could go to an operational asset either offshore or onshore, and you could dangle 10, 50, million, 50, 100, 300, 500 million dollars of benefit under their nose, which was relatively easily capturable, and it never made anybody do anything. And certainly that was the case at $100 barrel oil. That was not the key to get them to doing anything. Um, you know, and, and so that, um, you know, that, that, you know, quantitative business case that we all know and love and MPVs and all of that sort of stuff. I mean, you know, you, you absolutely need that to convince somebody to give you the money to do something. You know, it's the what you need to convince the CFO. But I'm not sure it's what convinces a project director or a, an operational manager. And so the kind of things that I think you need to do for that, for, 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 for engineers and asset managers is, is convince them, you know, what's in it for them, how are their daily lives going to improve, how is it going to make their operations improve, how is it going to improve everything that they're doing on a daily basis. And that's a qualitative story. That's a story about how you were before you had the ability to have real-time data and information and collaborate and share versus, you know, um, uh, versus now when you've got it and how that changes the daily work patterns and, and, and how your organisation works. And I think the other the other thing about it is, is that, you know, there, there needs to be some sort, we call, we call this the enabling business case, but it would be, what's the burning bridge? What is it that you've got to do tomorrow that you can't do today and you've got no choice? Yeah. And, 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 you know, um, you know, uh, you know, our friend in, in, um, in, in what was Sarah Judd Jacobs is, I've often said this, there's two drivers in life, greed and fear, and fear trumps greed. And so what we're seeing now, I think, is that those company, there are companies who are beginning to say, hell, if we don't do something drastic, we might not be here at the end of the year or the end of next year. Yeah. And so we have to do this. It has to, we have to do something transformational. And so I think in some respects, the current environment is going to make, potentially going to make it easier to do some of this organizational transformation.